There we go, look at that. Look. It's uh Luong and Kula. Look, both teams have a Kula. Dude, there's a fucking Choi in top four. There's Pachukea. Pachukea was playing Choi. This is literally the first time I've seen Choi at all. I know he's a 100% footsies kind of character, and his footsies aren't even that good. Like, you have a character like, um, what's it, Mien, who's like 100% footsies, but also has like, oh, like, acceptable combos. And then you have a 100% footsie character like Choi, where his combos are literally like mass jab. Stand A times 4. I think I don't like this game. Like, if, if KOF 13 was a 10 out of 10, I feel like to play this game is an 11 out of 10. But to watch, it's like a 9.5 out of 10. It's not as good. Not as good to watch, but it's close. It's still very footsie based, and you get to see cool combos more often because cool combos are... Um, more of an integral integral part of the game. See? Look at that cool combo. Straight into EX Super. She could have also done a EX combo. Max mode combo. I think Kula supposedly has bad max mode combos. I had someone, I heard that was a thing. I don't know if it's still true. I usually see just, like, like combo into super cancel. The thing is her meterless combos are, like, super elaborate. I think her maximum combos are not that different from her meterless combos. That's weird, because her EX, like, Tatsu, her EX, you know, spin kick thing, was one of the better EX moves in, uh, KOF 13. You could get some neat stuff off of that. This guy's just going for the super cancels. Athena's so weird. Athena's like a, a complete character design. Athena's the kind of character where she like she would be the hardest new character to introduce, but because she's been there literally since 94, like, they've had a lot of time to iron her out and balance her. Her tool set is so strange. A really slow fireball that's really dominant in footsies, but, like, not very useful in combos, as you would expect, being a fireball and all. A DP, an invincible DP with a fireball, with a slow fireball. Very potent combination, as seen in Guile. Um, a fucking one frame command grab that you can combo out of. You can either let it fly and it's like a, about the same strength as a normal command grab, or you can fucking interrupt it, which is usually weaker but occasionally stronger depending on your screen position and meter investment. I say usually stronger but occasionally weaker. They tried to make Necro's half circle forward grab. In Street Fighter 3, they tried to make it into like a uh, Athena's grab. They tried to make their own version of Athena's grab. A grab where you can just let it rock and get the damage, but you can juggle out of it, but it's really hard to make the juggles do as much damage as letting it rock. There are a lot of throws like that in Tekken. I shouldn't say a lot, but I'm pretty sure, like, for example, Bob has one where if you just do the throw, you get like a pretty good amount of damage. Unless they like ground tech. But if you do the throw into like a combo, if you like, don't let them land and instead like juggle, you can get a bit more damage and also a, a combo they can't ground tech. What's it called in Tekken when you like mitigate the damage of like a falling, like like a uh, fall from a throw, because you like tap I don't know kicks or something whenever when you hit the ground. It's like a just frame thing. You can do it after like giant swing. I'm not very good with my Tekken knowledge. You're in a really miserable position in uh, this KF especially because they removed like uh, every there's a close and far hard normal for everyone now for every hard normal. You're in a really shit position if you like land an attack like a jump in for example when jump ins are really fucking common in KF, and then you're outside the range of oh there's a maximum combo or oh, those are the beginning of one. Um, 
if you're outside the range of a a close a close C or a close D, there's very little way to pick it up. Or there's, it's quite easy to pick up, but you just got to go into a light. And they removed like far light cancels a lot of the time too. You don't have any far cancels at all in this game, so you've got to go either to max mode or you've got to cut your combo super short. Fortunately, max mode is basically always available. And you can convert almost any normal into a close C in max mode. Or a close D, or whatever your character does. I wonder if Kula has ever sucked K Dash's dick. Did I say that out loud? Oh shit, it's the Choi. It's Pachu KOF. I'm calling him the Choi, but Pachu KOF is much more famous than fucking Choi is. It's just weird. I literally haven't seen a Cheng or a Choi since the game came out. They're too honorable to their origins, and unfortunately they weren't very good in like most any KOF game. Choi is annoying. Or he's annoying in the KOF games I played. I don't like fighting him at all in fucking 98. Kula's, I think, 14 or something. She's older than Momoko, because Momoko is supposedly the youngest character they ever added. But I can't fucking look at Momoko and figure out how old she's supposed to be. She looks like 13. But she could be 10. It's hard to say. Momoko is only in one day, one game. One day. That's a that's like a Freudian slip. So that's like a meterless invincible DP, huh? Couldn't that be half circle forward or quarter circle forward punches? I'm pretty sure he had a juggle there and he just got like a close C, but I'm pretty sure the juggle would have added like a substantial amount of damage. I'm pretty sure he still had the reset after the juggle. Because I'm pretty sure you can combo. You can still combo. After half circle or quarter circle forward punches, Momoko could be eight. I don't fucking know. She has psychic powers. It's the only fucking way it makes any sort of sense at all that she could hurt these fucking grown ass adults as a little girl with no muscle mass. And they pretend fighting style. There, I said it. Momoko are cute. I played 11. I played quite a lot of 11. I played with her a lot, if you know what I mean. Bao? I, Momoko's just the youngest girl, I think. I have no idea how old Bao is. But I'm, I'm like, I'm like 60... I'm like 50 or 60% sure that Bao is a boy. I puzzled over it for a while. Androgynous usually means male. The only character I can think of where androgynous doesn't mean male is um, Makoto. And I guess King. Old King. King looks more like a woman in modern games. Oh yeah. Leo's a girl. I forgot about her. There's so many ways to interpret the Tekken Rock Howard. Their justice team is scumbag, but it's less scumbag now. But he's still playing it. Nair Josh isn't like the best KOF player, but he's quite good. He's like very good. But um His team is like the scummiest team. It was the scummiest team. Like even though Nair Josh wasn't winning everything, like people saw like him playing and they were like, damn, this game is like defective. 
It was largely him. I mean, it was probably, like, mostly... I don't know if the Japanese devs were watching fucking American tournaments that much compared to, like, Japanese tournaments and their own findings or whatever. Makoto was decently androgynous in Street Fighter 3. She's less androgynous in Street Fighter 4. Makoto is a unisex name. That's lost in the, um... The U.S. That's lost on U.S. players. Almost all names in Japanese have a clear male or a cl uh, clear female. There aren't that many us unisex names in Japanese. Makoto is unisex. You can have men named Makoto and a uh, woman named Makoto. There's also some wacky stuff with her voice actor. I'm pretty sure her U.S. voice actor was the U.S. voice of, uh, like, Astro Boy in her Japanese... No. Her Japanese voice actor was the Japanese voice of Astro Boy. Something really weird like that. She was voiced by Astro Boy. They spent like a super fucking long time recording her voices, her voice dialogue lines, because um, Makoto is a, it's the name of a river in Japan, or there is a river named Makoto rather, because it's more than just that, but there's a river named the Makoto River in Japan, and it's, um, uh, it's, it's in the fucking, whatever, the Tosa region or whatever that Makoto is supposed to be from, and that region has a really distinct dialect and they worked super hard to give Makoto that dialect Makoto's Japanese voice is actually like a crazy elaborate project apparently but it's like totally lost on western players I don't fucking know the dialect I don't know what the fuck Tosa is that's gonna work isn't it kapow that's a really good uh, climax. God, it did so much damage too. Patrick KF smart. Makoto's weird accent is like a big part of her character in Japanese. She was also conceived as a um, a counterpart to Ryu. She was conceived as Ryu's sister. It's like, hey, let's add um, let's add Makoto as Ryu's sister. And the idea was that she was going to look exactly like Ryu, but play absolutely like nothing like him at all. That was the gag. She was going to look like a very standard character and then be as abnormal as possible for people expecting a standard character. The Ryu sister didn't plan out, pan out, but um, they were after that. They considered um, Gokin's Gokin's granddaughter, Gokin's daughter slash Gokin's granddaughter, who is a canon character who exists, by the way. All right, I'll turn on the volume just a bit. And then they chickened out on that one. But they're, they're little references to that. It's actually kind of funny because like they kept little tiny bits of that. She has uh, every every normal that Gokin has that isn't expressly Shoto-ish is like a Makoto normal. And um, uh, they have wing quotes with each other acknowledging the fucking theoretical relationship. Like Makoto's like, you look like my grandpa. What's this crap? Why am I watching this? I don't care about this fucking round-headed man. Uh, 
Chao, but yeah. What are some other quirks about Makoto? Oh, her entire fighting style is literally Shotokan Karate. They have like an in-universe name for it. Fucking Rindokan. But it's literally Shotokan. Which is a gag at... Um, uh, the Shotos being called Shotokan Karate. Not only does she look like the Shotos, but she practices like a very, very, very faithful re recreation of Shotokan Karate. Who does fucking Mei Tenkun lead? Who does this? I only ever see this character on Anchor. I thought he was kind of a meter character. He actually seems like he'd be really good when the opponent has no meter. He seems like he'd be a really good lead. But his combos are so powerful. A lot of people just want to have meter when they are playing him because he does so much damage. Nothing beats Rindo Khan Karate. He's got that crouch C sweep. That's actually one of the better sweeps in the game from what I've seen. Especially because you have such a nice thing to cancel into in his slow ass fireball. He's such a weird little character. I feel like there's still other gags with Makoto's design. They put a lot of effort into her design compared to most characters. There's the bra thing. The only indication in Third Strike of Makoto's gender, the only direct indication of her gender, is, um, I should say the confirmation. There's indication, I guess, just in her appearance. The only confirmation of Makoto's gender is um, in her Dizzy animation. They were super careful with all her other animations, but the Dizzy, they deliberately show it so that the Gi slips down to show off her bra, thus confirming female. It's just a red thing under her Gi. Um most of the time but you can like clearly see it's like uh oh that's gonna work isn't it he tries to jump out maybe that didn't work but you wouldn't jump out of that that'd be a terrible response his knockdown animation is him resting his head on the pillow that's cute there's notice that Terry benefited a lot from the system changes in uh, this game. Unfortunately, his really good block strings are kind of gone. But being able to super cancel without burning like a drive meter is really fucking good. One of the most subtle but the best things about Makoto's design is her idle animation in Third Strike, which is fucking incredible. She has probably the most elaborate and well-designed idle animation, and I'm counting fucking Elena's weird-ass uh, rotoscoping. In her idle animation, she's fucking incredibly, incredibly still, but her geese still like moves in like the wind. You look at every character in Third Strike and everyone kind of moves or bounces or bobs or does something. Nice. But Makoto's unique. Makoto is absolutely perfectly still to show off how disciplined she is. Oh, 
it is so important how your air normals, your air days interact in this game. Geese. Is that really Geese versus Terry? I just realized that. I'm using. I'm pretty sure that Geese is... Geese is... Geese is... Geese is a reference to something, and I think I've seen whatever he's a reference to. I think it's like there. There's definitely there's some kung fu movie, probably a Jackie Chan movie, where the villain. It's just a Chinese trope, to have like a American villain. There's some kung fu movie out there somewhere, where it has a very fucking, like a white man, a white American man who looks like geese. I don't know who, but I just I can tell from his design. I'm just like fuck. I've seen so many movies that do that. Remember fucking uh I think it was like Benny the Jet in Dragons Forever. Anyone ever see that movie? Benny the Jet's been in a few Jackie Chan movies and it's always fucking incredible. I never saw Drunken Master one. I don't even know anything about it. I saw Drunken Master 2. The villain in that movie was Asian. I don't know if he was the villain. Or the sub-villain or whatever. But he was kind of a kicky kind of guy. And he was he looked like uh, Japanese or something. I don't know. Korean. He had that kind of face. <laughs> nice reflect. Damn, you must feel like a fool after a run like that. You literally kill yourself. I feel like Geese is almost fucking Benny the Jet from Dragons Forever. I feel like that's like 8 tenths of the way there. This scary ass white man. I'm going to be honest, I love American villains in like foreign movies. That's like one of my favorite tropes. The more over the top, the better. Like make him like the fucking most like big business, like I don't care about the needs of other humans, like anything. Make him literally without empathy. Like he would, he would sell his fucking, he would sell his mother for a fucking dollar bill. I love American villains in foreign movies. Especially greedy capitalist American villains in foreign movies. That's like my favorite trope. No. That is not a currently a Beth Movie Night movie. I love how every single scenario at the end of end round in uh, Chaos is still a mix up. He could have rolled that and he could have got huge damage. You can't even true block string because it could be a guard cancel roll. The only when you say British villain, the only thing I can immediately think of is like uh, is that gonna work? Yeah, I got it. What's that movie? The fucking it's like an American American history Revolutionary War movie. I can't remember it. Oh my god! 
again, he has changed the complexion of this match right yep. now. A lot of gimmicks here coming in. He's on. Why do all of fucking my supers work as anti airs? At different angles, too. Like, the punch super probably wouldn't have worked there. You know what movie? I'm like normally like the master of shitty 80s action movies starring like big name action stars. I've normally seen like all of them. Isn't technically British. It was fucking, it was, it was, it was, it was Snape. It was him. He's British. Anyway, I've normally seen like every action movie. Starring a big name action star. Made in the 80s. But I never saw... I never saw Total Recall. That one has somehow just passed me by. Never actually saw it. I've also never seen Escape from New York. I've been meaning to watch those two movies forever. What's that movie? Universal Soldier. I was like delighted to find out that movie existed. I've seen Die Hard a million times. I watch Die Hard every year. I watch Die Hard like on Christmas Day every year. It's like the ultimate Christmas movie. I really like Kurt Russell in other movies, but that's like his most famous movie and I've never seen it. Probably not actually his most famous movie. Anyway, do you guys know about Universal Soldier? Literally, like, J.C. Van Damme, the ultimate shitty action movie star, as a fucking robot, robot, like, like super soldier cop. And the villain is played by Dolph Lundgren. Fucking uh, Ivan Drago from Rocky IV. I think it's my favorite Kurt Russell movie. Every now and then, there's just like some action movie that would have been like really forgettable, but it is accidentally like a it act it accidentally stands as like a parody of action movies. You know what I mean? I think like Universal Soldier is one of those. Like it would have been like not a super notable movie if it wasn't the perfect parody of action movies. If it wasn't like the perfect like like jab at action movies, it's like unintentional. It's unintentionally the most generic action movie possible. Not the most generic, but like the most like. Like, it falls into every trope perfectly. It's like the best example of every trope. Like, uh, what's another one that does that? I feel like they're really good examples of that. Oh, uh, what's it? Uh, Cobra. Cobra is a really good example of that. Sylvester Stallone movie. It would otherwise be, like, 100% forgettable if it wasn't literally, like, the, the, the best ever example of an action movie star. JCVD is my favorite shitty action movie star. Even though all the movies he's in are shit, he's he's like he's like the he's like the budget he's like the budget Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like when you're too poor to afford Arnold, you just get JCVD. He like hasn't really been in a good movie. 
JCVD is good, like the movie JCVD is good, and Bloodsport is pretty pretty entertaining. But that's like it. And most of the movies he's been in, like Hard Target and shit, are like really awful. Lionheart. They're like fun, but they're awful. They have like very few redeeming qualities other than like the generic action movie. Like 80s action movie fucking flair. 90s. Kickboxer. <laughs> like most of it, most of his movies are his worst movie. I've seen like most of JCVD's movies though. I don't know why. I just love him. My favorite is probably. I don't know. I guess my favorite is Bloodsport. Hard Target, he has a really killer mullet. Literally, like, I don't know who the fuck, like, I don't know why, I don't know who the fuck okayed it, but he has, like, the world's greatest mullet for the entire movie. And it's never acknowledged. Of course it's not acknowledged, it's just his hair, everyone just treats it normally. But, like, it's, like, the most retarded haircut. It is the king of mullets. Go look at, um, go, like, literally Google, like, hard target JCBD. Every JCVD movie must have a full split, and every JCVD movie must have a shot of JCVD's uh, bare ass. That's how it works. One shot of his bare ass and one full split. Sometimes several of both. Van Damme is like apparently really proud of his fucking butt, and he tries to show it off in every movie he's in. <laughs> that haircut is like hilariously bad. Let me see this motherfucker. Damn it. Yup, that's it. I love it. It's like perfect on his head. It really works for him. In a very cheesy way. It's like the, it's like the perfect cheesy haircut. And he's like the perfect cheesy guy. It's like accidentally cheesy. It's the best accidentally cheesy haircut. And he's the best accidentally cheesy guy. He like tries to be serious in every movie he's in, but they're just so stupid because it's him. The perfect summation of J.C. Van, Van Damme is accidentally stupid. Accidentally ridiculous. And for a game with so many characters and such good balance, there sure isn't that much fucking... There aren't that many characters that see tournament play. Yes, that haircut. It's fucking awful. I like it with it wavy, though. I feel like he should always have his hair like this. I'd put John Travolta in every action movie if I could. I feel like watching some random fucking fighting game footage. What's a fighting game I haven't seen footage of in a long time? Time out. We're gonna watch something wacky. I don't know what yet. Whoa! That's it. That's a winner. Remember this game? Remember this game? Look, it's Ken Rolento. This game has changed quite a lot since it stopped being like the, the main seller. The big tourney game. It's basically the same. People are as skilled, but more willing to pick low tiers. Now. Which actually makes it like a super interesting game to watch.
I don't think Rolento is super good, but he's certainly neat to watch. God, I'm having all these memories. I used to play this matchup a lot. Rolento wasn't super low. He was probably the weakest of the... No, Hugo existed. He was like the only... Besides Hugo, he was the only DLC character who wasn't overtly broken. He's got a really weird tool set, but it's a learnable tool set, if that makes any sense. That didn't kill. You really let that fly? That's minus seven. You just mash jab there. If he back dashes, it's okay. If he forward dashes, then you punish him. If he releases, it counter hits. You don't have armor when you focus FADC. When you, like, you know, EXFADC, I guess is what it's technically called. Mashing jab as Rolento literally beats all options. You haven't seen Pulp Fiction? Just go watch it, dude. It's a pretty good movie. It's worth watching. It's funny. And pretty grim. It's like the perfect Tarantino movie. Funny and grim. It also has really, really fucking good actors. Literally everyone is great. You got John Travolta, you got Uma Thurman, you got fucking Bruce Willis. You got Samuel L. Jackson. I feel like some other important people too. Fucking, um... Uh... Tarantino himself plays a pretty funny character. Nice, the super link. That's like a two frame super. Or three frames, or six, I think, depending on which version you use. I love all the fan theories about Pulp Fiction. I don't want to, like, spoil the movie so I can't talk about it, but I love the fan theories. They're hilarious. Okay, this is a fucking El Forte. 50N. His name is literally 50N. That's a fucking coin. That's a paltry amount of money. Jesus Christ. The way he's playing. Focus isn't even that good on Relenta, what the fuck? He's going crazy with that shit. The guy from the Green Mile? You know fucking Tom Hanks? Oh, and there's a cameo by, um... Um... Oh, what's his face? I can't think of his name. Jesus, I literally can't think of his name. Pulp Fiction has the greatest cameo of all time. In like a flashback to uh, Bruce Willis' childhood. That scene, like, I didn't even think it was funny at all the first time I watched. And then I watched it like years later and I was like, holy fuck, this is literally by far the funniest scene in the movie. That was a weird combo. Got a counter hit, far stand fierce, and then combo far stand strong. Christopher Walken, that was it. It is the greatest cameo of all time. It's the greatest bit part of all time. It's an absolutely hysterical scene. It's made all the better by the fact that it's Christopher Walken delivering it. I, like, can't watch that scene without cracking up now. Even though it's supposed to be, like, a sad scene, I guess. It's very clearly, um... Tongue-in-cheek. <laughs> the best part about it is fucking Child Bruce Willis's fucking blank face. During the entire monologue. <laughs> like, he just doesn't know how to react. I wouldn't know how to react shit. Reversal bot slam worked. Honda's reversals are really bad. You can option select all of them. Yeah, except headbutt is the hardest and he didn't have meter, so he couldn't do that. This is a this is like the this is like Honda's it's one of his worst matchups. Ryu is like not usually someone's worst matchup, but he happens to have a really good tool set against Honda. Nice. 
namely fireballs and ATOs. He doesn't get any meaningful punishes, but he just wins in footsies. This Ryu is not keeping the distance, which is what Ryu should do. He's letting Honda just wander in. It's okay to let Honda wander in, because Honda loses charge to wander in, but the problem is you need to then, like, you know, do the stuff that Honda can't do anything about because he doesn't have charge. Honda's answers to fireballs are just so shit. He has to either jump over them, which is, like, you know, the worst case scenario for everyone. Or he has to uh, Ultra 1, which he usually won't have. This is big damage. Mm, he went for the big damage ender. Oh, wasn't it? Um, uh, I don't remember who it was. It was What's-His-Face. Groundhog Day. Why am I so bad with names right now? Bill? What's his name? Can't pull a name up. Bill Murray. That was it. Bill Murray as himself. I must be tired. It's 3.38 a.m. This matchup, I'm pretty sure, is actually... It might be good for Honda. Headbutt is decent against dive kicks and the dive kick mix up and he also has like Yang doesn't fight like a like a wall very well at all I don't know if, if Rekka punishes headbutt which it might then that could be really really bad or like EX Rekka punishing like even EX headbutt would be really really bad Groundhog Day is the reason that Bill Murray was put on this earth There are a lot of movies where I saw them when I was young and I didn't like fully appreciate them and then I watched them as an adult and fucking I was like shit, this is like a fucking killer movie. Nice. Yeah, look at that. That was cool. I got a big damage combo out of it. Like the Truman Show. The Truman Show is a really good example of a movie I saw as a kid that I like thought was pretty good, and then I watched it as, as an adult, and I realized it was a masterpiece. The nuances that made it really good were lost on me. I just thought it was like kind of cool. Nice anti here. It's actually a fairly consistent ATO regardless of which butt slam it is. That's pretty good. Yang? What's this Yun? You're correct though, Yang is probably the most miserable damage in the entire game. He has to do like combos with like a fuck ton of one frame links if he wants any sort of respectable damage. You've gotta be able to do like like a, a, a block string into palm, medium palm, which is the only one you can combo into. Like a uh, low forward medium palm, for example. And then you've got to FADC and do like stand jab, which is a one frame link. And then you've got to do stand medium kick from that, which is a one frame link. And then you can do like, for example, a uh, dash in close medium kick again, and then like a roll from there. That gets decent damage for two bars off of like a poke. But that's like, he's got to like do like, like a frame perfect dash and two one frame links in order to get that conversion. And even the close medium kick, dash and close medium kick is a little difficult. Yang has to jump through all these fucking hoops to get okay damage. How about 12 Angry Men? That movie's old as fuck and it's fucking incredible. 12 Angry Men is like a perfect movie. 10 out of 10. If you want to see a Yang who could actually do like the optimal Yang enders, Shine was really good. He was really good about his, his combos, if nothing else. He was really good in general, his footsies were really solid, but his combos were so good. Next level Battle Circuit was always my fucking shit. I love the fucking eras of it, when it was like always like, like Sabin versus like Sanford. And then it was like Sabin versus Dominion versus Sanford.
and then it was like fucking it's just Sanford Dominion every week. And then Smug slowly scooted in and unearthed them. Smug, Smug slowly made Sanford quit fighting games by being better. Sanford used to be the best. It's not that he used to play. He used to be the best. Sanford used to be the king. Those were the fucking days. It'd be nice if Sanford started playing with Akuma's release, but I have my doubts. And then it was like Shine slowly snuck in. Shine was like always there, but he changed mains. I forget who he used to play. It's like Boxer or something. And he switched over to like Yang, and he was like fucking. It was like the perfect switch. It was so frustrating when like Sanford was playing Oni, because he was like the greatest fucking Oni, but it wasn't good enough. He was honestly one of the best Onis I've ever seen, but it just wasn't like super. Oh, I forgot about Rufus, man. Rufus's tool set is so strange. I feel like he's not particularly strong. But that fucking dive kick and that fucking crouch fierce. His conversions are pretty good too if you do like stand short, stand short, stand fierce. Sanford's been going through a crisis for a long time. Let's watch one of my favorite Street Fighter 4 movies. You guys will like this. No, it wasn't that easy, was it? Oh, Shine was Goken, that was right. Who the fuck was the... It wasn't... Lingo. Yeah, mistranslated. It's supposed to be Ringo. Well, it's not mistranslated, it's just a different version. Ringo means Apple, I think. Alright, this is this will be you guys. This will be one of your favorite fucking Oni videos. If you like Oni, this is fucking a this is a treat. If you like Goken, this is a treat too. But like shit, that was a uh, uh, Rico Rico Suave. And his award-winning smile. Gotta hold on. I was paying attention to the chat. I want to watch this. Ringo is like a really good Japanese Goken from fucking arcades. And Santrax is the king, and also maybe the best Oni player in the fucking Americas. Oh, his fucking plays in this set are just incredible. He makes, like, god plays this whole set. This is, like, one of the best fucking sets of Oni, and what Oni's capable of. Tried to beat that. It was brave. Like, literally, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that nice little save. Oni, like, the the joke with Oni is banned is that Oni is, like, this big intimidating boss character, but he's actually, like, a little mediocre. He's actually not very interesting at all. Look at, look at that. <laughs> Sanford's face this whole set. What up, Raya? Long time no chat. Usually it's me and your stream these days. That was a, like a car fireball or something. This fucking set, that car throw. This fucking set is perfect. It's like a crouch tech with low forward. That's like a really weird crouch tech. I can watch that. But give it give me a sec. This is like a oh there's the jab demon. I do that. I made that myself, but other people made it too. Jab demon is like a that's like a walk in seven twenty equivalent. Can't jump out by the freeze. 
It's really easy to do too. It's like really easy to do and really hard to get out of. I did that all the time with Evil Ryu. You have to do it with Super Demons though, so you can only do it with um, Evil Ryu, Kuma, and uh, Oni. And you couldn't do it with the Kuma's Ultra one. That's the setup. That setup is so tight. It didn't work out for him, but it's so cool. Medium Tatsu FADC is plus a fuck ton, especially on crouching opponents. So he tries to catch crouch techs with a very delayed Medium Tatsu FADC. Didn't get it there. If it works, you can link into uh, Ultra 2. Like, straight into Ultra 2. It's really weird. I've only seen it a couple times in real matches. EXDP kills here, I think. No, because he has the EXDP flip. Yeah. Centrex knew, and he fucking made the appropriate read. The extreme flip has a lot of invincibility. That Tatsu to dodge the anti air. Like, every single round has some incredible Oni thing. Like, some hyper specific cool tech. The punch star combo. They're both punch star combos. The car throw. He's got the demon again. The wiggle. Yum. That was towards Roundhouse Car Demon. Super good. It's actually the best card demon in the game. Both in terms of range and like practicality. The thing about Goken is that all of his wake ups were shit, but there were so many of them. That like they did that they would work. The only one that actually gets out of meaty EXDP is the EX Demon Flip. EX Parry gets killed and um EX Tatsu gets killed. There it is. Crouch attack, caught, and counter hit. This is like Sanford literally pulling out fucking everything. If I were Ringo, I'd be fucking... I'd be terrified. Bio, I caught up on uh, JoJo 1 through 4. I've like watched all of the JoJo that's like... has anime. I'm now officially a JoJo. Oh shit. My favorite character is um, probably Joseph. Or perhaps Whole Horse. Oh, he landed! Or Kakyoin. I really liked, um, what's his face? Kira had really good, um, beaming going for, like, his entire, like, every appearance he had. Ugh! That shit is so sick. Fireball super to counter fireballs. I, like, theorized that was possible, and I didn't see it for, like, a year. And then, uh... Alright, let me click this link. See what we got here. Okay, raising demon. Reversal. What the fuck? 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 Shadow. Confirmed. Shadow everyone confirmed. So like pausing on particular frames leaves everyone black. Hilarious. That probably wasn't visible at all on stream. When um Kira is looming over uh Hayato in the fucking bathroom. And, uh... You can see the shadow. It's like fucking the kid in the bathtub, and then it's like the shadow of, uh... The shadow of Killer Queen. Even though it's like Kira in the room. You can see the shadow of his stand. It's so cool. 
It's like such a tight, like little detail. He just wants to live a quiet life like a plant. Oh, I love that shit. Yum, yum. If your knockdown is the palm, you actually still have juggle left. But Goken's juggles are super specific. It's like jump, neutral jump fierce and back jump roundhouse. Or forward jump roundhouse also works. Pulner F is perfect. Anytime doing Raging Demon Dame. Oh, really? No, no. That probably works. He probably just missed the, fr the frame. Befeel? What the fuck is a Befeel? When you say the final fight, do you mean Dio or do you mean, um, uh, Cream? Vanilla Ice? It feels so stupid talking about it because of all these fucking music names. This is a good fucking poll. He was really good during the Vanilla Ice fight. Part three was okay. It was like entertaining, but it was a different kind of entertaining from other from other. They changed it, you know. It was different from part one and two. More fucking, more fucking Valen of the week. But um, fuck it, fuck it, built up perfectly to the final, the final few episodes, and fuck the final few episodes were like some of the best episodes of anime I've ever seen. I really love fucking Jotaro's theme. <laughs> Something like that. Like that. The entire concept of stains was just that fucking you couldn't fight while posing. It's like the fucking creator was just like, damn, I love when these fucking men pose. I wonder if there's some way that I can keep them posing even during the fucking action scenes. And then he introduced stands. Also, I'm willing to bet that the creator has the most confusing sexuality of any human. Let's kill Daho. Koichi, you're cute. Yeah, I know. Going through fireballs is useful. I was experimenting with that. The range is actually pretty good, especially in V-Trigger. I feel like, um... Humanoid stains just go up and up. I feel like sometimes they were humanoid stains, and sometimes they weren't in Part 3. And I feel like by Part 4, like, every fucking stain was humanoid.
Plus a shit ton. Plus on hit and plus a shit ton in V trigger. Plus two and plus three. I know that makes a world of difference, don't get me wrong. I already know about all her changes, dude. Dude, literally the fucking alien. I, I, I lied when I said fucking every other character. The alien was my favorite character in JoJo by far. Like, no fucking question. He was absolutely incredible. Also, that combo was insane. The fucking Earth, Wind, and Fire guy. He was perfect. He was the perfect character. Every fucking still I've ever seen from part 5 is homoerotic as hell. Why isn't Dudley more popular? All I know about part 5 is this is the taste of a liar. And also like fucking uh, Giorno and uh, I don't know the name of the other character. One of the other characters always are fucking have their faces pressed against each other in every fucking scene. Not really though, but you know. Part five fucking stills are so gay. I don't. I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. It's very stylish. I was like disappointed in part one and how like fucking not bizarre it was. I was like promised a bizarre adventure, and it was actually a very normal adventure. Part two got like a little bizarre, and part three started getting really bizarre. And I was just like, this is it. This is what I've been waiting for. Part 1 is definitely my least favorite of the one I've seen. Part 1 is just so weird to watch. Fucking especially like the end. Like, I shouldn't even say the end. Well, yeah, the end. Literally, um... He's he's just fucking... Jonathan is just Kenshiro. Or, he's not, but like, fucking... He's... Visually. He's just Kenshiro. There's literally no difference. Whoa. That drop. I would believe that. I would believe that it's a case of fucking Seinfeld. That it was unique and now it's just incredibly cliche because everything copied it. But it's so generic. It's very boring. It had like barely any fucking episodes in the anime. I love that combo. Do you prefer toilet paper or paper towels? Toilet paper. What kind of question is this? Who has paper towels for such a thing? Do 
Zapelli literally sucks. He like fucking practiced Hamon his entire life. And he fucking died like a bitch. And Jonathan practiced Hamon for like 20 seconds and he became like a better fucking Hamon user. It's like, fuck you. This is 2015, Topanga, spring. Smug had like a couple adventures in Japan. He did okay. Smug did okay. He didn't do great. He fought a he fought a bunch of gods. He mostly got bopped, but he did some bopping of his own. He was he wasn't the worst. There was like someone there who did even worse. I shouldn't say someone. Smug did okay. There was like so there were like f like four people who did worse. The regular rose. The thing about the New York guys is they look really, really good, and they are, but they also play each other a fuck ton. So, like, even though they were really good, like, genuinely very, very good, um. Sneeze coming. Ugh. Um, Smug's playstyle is very, like, very based around, his footsies are very based around, like, player reads, and he didn't, he was, he's really, he can't make player reads a lot against a lot of Japanese players. He's never done that, he's always fucking killed in New York, and he's never, like, done that well in American majors, and he's never done that well in, uh, uh, overseas shit. Danke. I haven't seen that combo in so long, I like forgot it existed. Stare Run House and Taya. Run House and Taya I'm not saying he doesn't do enough homework. Well, yeah, I guess I am. I, more just that, like, the things that he's really good at don't show very well in international shit. Yeah, this was early. Early, early ultra. Not early. I don't remember when ultra came out. I feel like it was 2014. And this is mid 2015. I'd like check some of the characters, but I'm gonna do a bunch of videos like tomorrow and following. Nice. Ultra, ultra one perfectly counters. Uh, sure, you can have ADC. Second hit FADC from Ken. It catches all options. Release gets counter hit, back dash gets chased down, forward dash gets punished. I think. I think forward dash gets punished. I don't actually remember. Very nice, that's a perfect counter to focusing opponent. Ultra combo W is definitely underrated. 
for any character who's 75% and maybe some of the 60% characters. Red Focus, I feel like, is pretty much fully explored. I don't think there's a whole lot to say about that one. Love that combo. Oh, what the fuck? That was a failed instant EX Tatsu. Red V skill? Treble! Like a V skill that costs one bar to do? That's actually a super rad idea. Unfortunately, there's not going to be any good way to input it. I don't want to have to do no fucking light punch, medium punch, medium kick. Dude, that's brilliant. Imagining the way that they would change each character's V skill to compensate for it costing a bar is just really cool to think about. I'm like getting excited just thinking about it. It would be medium kick. Also, I command overlap with fucking V trigger, which would be inappropriate for a V skill. Dude, I'm actually super down for a fucking red V skill. Like, the more I think about it, the more excited I get. That's a really cool idea. Like, what would Ryu's fucking one bar V skill have to do to be worth one bar? No recovery at all? Like a fucking Street Fighter 3 parry? Kimmy's red V skill is like fucking twice as fast. Laura's fucking red V skills like safe on block. Or like plus on block if you cancel uh into the dash. The more I think about this shit, oh my god. <laughs> Alex would have to do something super cool. It would have to, like, you'd have to be able to, like, cancel into it and link out of it or something. I can't think of anything that would make his super good. It'd make every hit of his next combo a counter hit. <laughs> that would just make it even more broken in, um... Oof. He'd just be able to do infinite towards faces. Oh, I like that. Every hit into a crush counter, including, like, lights. Guard crush. I like that. I like that a lot. Gives him guard crush on his crush counter attacks. Like, towards Fierce and Samurai House. And Sweet. All of them guard crush. But it goes away the, like, like whiffs an attack or whatever. Or he's hit, or whatever it is that already makes his attack go away. Maybe if you did Nash's like EX EX V skill, it did uh it like drains like a hundred health from the opponent or something like that. That was a really good cross under. Ultra 2. He's not going to get a whole lot of meter. 
They already got two boys back. What the fuck? Take it all back. The red focus. Imagining Nash like having a, a EXV skill that literally doesn't have any sort of combo potential at all, but it just straight up drains 200 health. That'd be kind of cool. Or drains 100 health. But it just creates a 200 health differential. You get like a ton of health back. That'd be really neat. Smug, Ultra 1 is really... Smug uses Ultra 1 depending on the matchup. Or Ultra Double depending on the matchup. He uses literally every Ultra depending on what he needs to do. And Ultra 1 is really good here. Both because it punishes you fireballs really well, which prevents Ken from throwing that many, and it punches his TP really well. Much he nearly had a really bad drop there. Yatta, yatta ze. Fun fact: um, I'm pretty sure Ken's. I mean, not Ken. Uh, the least two ultras are actually the same speed. One just struggles really well. Oh, what the fuck? Why would you ever do that? That had to be a mistake of some variety. And yet, what would you ever... Like, how would you get that on accident? He's nearly died. Didn't we manage to go like... Oh, there it is. That's a punish. Really good in this matchup. I was thinking Ken's would just be plus. You could do like uh like like some button, like uh I don't know, stay medium punch, and then you do like the fucking red skill, and it's just like like on block stay medium punch red skill into fucking like back strong is like plus it's like plus a lot, not into back strong but just like it's plus enough to like link stuff. It just gives him a plus on plus on block uh, run cancel. And if it hits, then you can combo out of it. And you can do stuff like uh, Stand Fierce, Red Skill, Stand Fierce, Red Skill, Stand Fierce, Red Skill, Red Skill, Stand Fierce. Four Stand Fierces. That would probably not be okay. That would probably be too strong. Ibuki's red skill would be exactly the same except fucking instant. It would have like two frame start up. It'd be like pow. Okay, maybe not two. But like five. And zip across the screen at 100 miles an hour. Fucking incredible. It's a really good idea, damn it. Nice. Caught him. I think Xiao Hai showed up and did really shit. I think that's what happened. Like, Xiao Hai was at this event and he literally lost to everyone. If it was just a roll with the identical, like, data of a, of a step, of the step, the run, and it just couldn't, he couldn't be hit during it, that would still be pretty good. Xiao Hai, like, literally right before this event was when he said that thing that, like, you know, I like to make fun of. According to Xiao Hai, um, he has the most raw talent of literally any player. I don't remember how exactly he said it. It was, like, the only time he loses is to, like, the bad luck. Or, like, bad matchup. He, like, said the most conceited shit I'd ever heard in my entire life. Xiao Hai is damn good. I can't even fucking argue. Xiao Hai does have, like, some of the most fucking... Some of the most raw skill I've ever seen. But, like, he said something that was just, like, completely... Completely ridiculously, like... Like like ego egotistical and then he like went to this thing and he like lost to literally every other player 
Hybrid here is just making a joke because my game is set to like Street Fighter V Season 2. And we're just watching Street Fighter 4 because, I don't know. Damn it, I stayed up an hour. I meant to not do this. We could have watched another Third Strike episode. The more I think about Red Skill, the more I want to email Capcom. One bar reskill. Huh? That was a failed ultra. Jesus. That's three frames, but it's not invincible. I feel like the player with the most raw skill is probably Zhen. I don't feel like he's the best player in any game, but in terms of just execution and like talent, he just leads it. Um, I feel like the player with the best player understanding is probably Infiltration. I would say that the best fucking player. No, I feel like it's probably the best. The best. The best footsie. The best understanding of footsies is either Momochi or Infiltration. I can't figure which one between them, but I feel like it's one of them. Shen is like Shen is unfortunately no Shen Shen is like really good anyway. Like Shen definitely rode the fact that like people didn't know Gen very well. But also he's fucking talented. He would go for perfect shit all the time. He would go for like the ultra hyper optimal punishes and stuff like that. Like, A will change the direction is minus three, I think. And you would see, like, Shen block a change of direction, and then you'd reverse all hard hands, which is three frame startup, and then he'd FADC and do, like, fucking stand strong, stand fierce, which is a one frame link, and then stand forward, tar combo. Fucking up kick, something like that. He would, like, do, like, hyper optimal shit all the time. I could have an ultra two. And said so he went for a one bar combo. That feels a lot like a mistake to me. Going backward in time watching this footage, I'm just like, he could have done EX parry there. It's like, no, he would have died. Because you take white damage. That movie always looks homeless. He's damn good. At third strike. But third strike is, like, even though he's, like, damn good at third strike, even though he's way better than most fucking pros at third strike, it's, like, third strike is still, like... I don't know. That movie is the best Chun-Li in Third Strike. That's not even a question. If he said it, he's right. That's just like, that's not even conceded. That's just stating the facts. There's literally no Chun-Li who comes close to him. There are like two Chun-Li's who come close to him. But like, he's so far and above. You look like... In Third Strike is the game where like a pretty good Chun-Li can fight against like a top... Like a top any other character, not any other, but like tons of others. The world's best necros go like half and half against like moderately good Chun Li's. There's so many like fucking nameless, faceless Chun Li's in Third Strike, and fucking MOV just is so clearly better. The best aura was definitely Crota. The best aura who is in Kuroda is probably Thanatos. I don't, I don't even I haven't even seen that much footage of Dirty playing. That's just that one famous video, which I've seen a billion times by the way. That was a failed ultra. It would have worked. Fucking sucks. Ugh. This is stuffed. That movie 
we played a little Street Fighter 4. I feel like he didn't play Chun in that game. He played Ibuki. He was quite good. He actually made like, even though he like didn't play that much, he made like huge, he made really good tournament showings. Dude, a dog face. People never post dog face in my chat and it's a shame because it's the best emote. Um, they took away a sit grab and a spiral DDT because they literally, I don't know why they took away a sit grab. Because it has no function if win a game without parry. They took away a spiral DDT because they literally just changed the motion of it and changed what it does a little bit. It was useless in third strike. Alex's headbutt in Street Fighter V is not useful, but it's not useless. Charge down up punch just literally stun gun headbutt plus uh, spiral DDT, like rolled into one move. Ohio is also fine. I love SF5. My only regret is that I'm a little bad at it. But like, I agree with most every change to the system compared to other Street Fighters. It's a shame that it's had the worst release of any video game because of how good it is. I love that link. Mochi's being so persistent. That's, whoa, oh my god. Then being up meeting Momochi is not a fucking joke. How about Elena? Sako had a pretty good Elena, but I feel like Gamer B was better. Sako was better at some of the robotic shit, but Gamer B was like more skilled overall. You know one of my favorite Twitch emotes that no one ever posts? That one. Oh man, I'm watching Elena and I'm getting nostalgic. I remember playing this character. <laughs> He's running Ultra Double. Saka's weird like that. I actually really liked Ultra Double on Elena. That versatility felt good. Oh my god, that optimized punish. Oh my god, that counter hit combo. Oh my god, that Starman House got jab link. That's one frame. That's like technically optimal. It's only opt he didn't even do the optimal version. It's supposed to be uh it's only optimal to do that if you do Starman House crush jab cut strong, which is two one frame links. Healing. People bitch about that shit, but look how little HP she got back. Granted, it's ultra double. Look, it's all gone. All the hell she got back in one throw. She can't get a full healing at all against anyone good. And partial healings just don't heal that much, considering she has no ultra. I've never ever played any JoJo based video game. Because I only 
recently got into JoJo. Not at the smash off. That could have been an OS. That can be a link. Towards strong naturally links into a crouch jab, but it's one frame. And it's got three active frames, so it can be two or three frames. Towards medium kick does not naturally link into a crouch jab. And with media it becomes one or two frames. Yu Hakusho Dark Tournament, that's a PS2 game. I never actually played that one. It was a fighting game, right? I played Tournament Tactics, which was a Game Boy Advance version that was like a fighting game. I mean, uh, uh, SRPG. For some reason I beat it, even though I remember it being bad. But I never unlocked the final area because you had to get like every single character in the game to like a super high level. Sounds Japan only. Smug looks like an alien. Does not look like a human. I need to go to bed super soon. I'm tired as fuck. I'm starting to really feel it. I'm starting to die. This might be my last match. I love that juggle. I haven't seen that in ages. That was cool. I hate fucking almost any fucking manga that turns into an any shonen that turns into an anime because of the fucking stupid ass filly shit they had. No, I could live with Keiko. She was fine. Who I hated was fucking Koenma. All the scenes where Koenma was present in the manga, they were okay. But just the random cuts to Koenma and like the fucking one assistant guy who literally wasn't even in the manga. Every fucking time something happened. Or like King Kai in Dragon Ball Z. You're watching some shit happen then all of a sudden it's just a cut to King Kai. Like, don't do that, Goku! There's no way Goku's body can handle Kaioken times 20. I don't need that shit. That shit was a waste of my fucking time. I hate fillers so much. I like filler only arcs are the actual worst. They're always garbage. They're garbage that waste my fucking time. Characters like Koenma and his assistant or King Kai and fucking everyone on Planet Kai are awful. I'm pretty sure in the manga it was like 60%, 80%, 100%, and in the anime it was like uh, 80%, 100%, 120%. Oh, that drop. There's a reset. That fucking optimal ass punish. Silver Cherry, Requiem, Arrows. Nice boy, Larino.
don't remember Sensui having anything like that. Yes, counter hit. Sensui had the offense armor and the defense armor that were literally out of nowhere. I hated that. That was just like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, they already did such a good job making a, uh, his, his power level. Where it's just he has a fuck ton of spirit power and he has a really weird martial art. That was really neat. They did a really good job with that. That he could just beat everyone with his weird, weird martial art. Um, I'm fine with that. I don't mind fucking that kind of show. The VHS was actually part of a series of VHSs. That was like mentioned once in the anime. I don't know if it was mentioned in the manga. I mean, that was mentioned once in the manga. I don't know if it was mentioned in the anime. Anyway, they just fucking since we gets to the demon realm and it's just like here's two literally bullshit powers I never pulled out before. Let me wear my offense armor. Let me wear my defense armor. It's like what? Where'd you get these? You were such a good villain, Sensui, and then fucking shit just hit the fans so hard. I love you, Yu Show. That's a one frame punish. No, two frame punish. He just missed it. Kurama and Hiei, I liked them a lot as a kid, but now I think they're both insufferable. Kurama literally has a new bullshit power every fucking fight. Like, his powers are just fucking... He's literally just a grab bag. Kurama's just a grab bag. Here in my hat, we have this fucking plant, demon realm plant that makes your dick tiny. And Hiei always did the same fucking thing. It's like, here's my Dragon of Darkness Flame. Literally, he only had one move. It was like the exact opposite of Krama, but it was fucking even more obnoxious somehow because that one move just magically beat everything. My Dragon of Darkness Flame killed the fuck out of that guy. My Dragon of Darkness Flame killed the fuck out of this guy. I fused with my Dragon of Darkness Flame and killed the fuck out of someone else. I've used my Dragon of Darkness Flame on fucking... On, on this, on that. There are like huge problems with like, like, they didn't, the author didn't like do a very good job at all of like fucking setting, setting a bar. It's like use case bar was set occasionally is like fucking here's my one my one spirit shot per whenever and that worked really well you just get one bullet and you just have to use it super carefully and then they had a like a power gap where he like trade under Genkai and then he had no like upper limit it didn't like 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 he could just do whatever for a little while he could just fire fucking spirit guns whenever he wanted to and they didn't define like he literally shoots five spirit guns in the uh the arc against uh, the four sane beasts, and then in part in the dark tournaments, like oh well, I have four shots. Like they try to like rein it back. They try to be like, okay, this is how my power works. I can fire four bullets now. And then they had another fucking. Um, 
like after that, once that was all done, I did another power increase. And again, like uh like basically all the all the Sensui saga, he has like no limits on his power. No clear limits on his power. And then for all of the dark tournament, the second dark tournament, the fucking yokai tournament, he had like no limits on his power. Kubar probably had the most like limited powers. Like we ne we always understood what Kubar Kubar could do. Genkai was good. I'm okay with him turning demon, that was fine. It made him special in a way that I wasn't I didn't think was awful. It's like hard not to like Kuobar because he's the only one that makes any sense. He was so bullshit. He was an awful character. He only lost like one or two fights in the entire series. No, I don't know if he ever lost. I like don't remember him losing. He only had like three fights in the dark tournament, or like two. I think two. He killed Zeru and he fought Bui, and I don't remember if he fought anyone else at any point. He only fought Zeru in the first round. In the second round with the fucking android guys, they were androids, they were like fucking mind controlled. He couldn't fight. In the third one, he and the masked fighter were like chained up. He didn't even lose to Urameshi, the fucking Urameshi. The uh, second fight, they just fought to a draw. He only lost like once to Urameshi the first time. And literally to a fluke. He only had like two fights in the whole dark tournament. He didn't fight anyone in the uh, Fractured Fairy Tales. It's like, what the fuck were you doing here? He like lost, but he won, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, he fought the Beast Orb guy. No, he fought two guys on that team. He did. He fought two people on the Fractured Fairy Tales. He didn't fight anyone on the ninja team. Demon ninjas. He fought the fucking guy with the axe hand, and he fought the guy who could turn into like various animals. So it's four fights, and he won all of them. <sighs> Remember in the four fucking same beasts where he just instantly dissects. The fucking guy. It's like, let's have Kuabara have like this ultra hard fight against this fucking sane beast. And then like a sane beast that's literally stronger, like gets fucking cut into like 16 pieces in like, in like one nanosecond. It's like, okay. I said him, Bui. Zero Bui, and then the two, um, the two guys on the Fractured Fairy Tales team. Literally, that was like so bullshit. The entire fight like took like like one page. It's like fuck you, he. That's an insufferable character design. He's so bullshit. I can't believe he was the most popular character, but he was literally the most popular character because of how he could just bullshit everyone. He was like a fucking earlier Sasuke. This fucking edgy guy. Ah, he missed this link. Tall. Yeah, 
The only character who's even a little bit bullshit like that in One Piece is um, uh, Zoro. Air combo. Zoro is another character where it's like we can't show him losing because it would hurt his image. Nice combo. Remember when Elena could take a throw and then it instantly hit you with crouch jab from the range after you take the throw? I like how they refuse to acknowledge. Like they, are f I feel like Zoro could probably beat Luffy in a fight. Like they can never show those two characters conflict in any way, because like why why uh, there's this big lingering question of like why is even Zoro like following Luffy? Just wants to see him become the power the pirate king. Like how Usopp, like they had this big fucking thing super recently. It's like, oh my god, he's awakened his hockey, and they've done absolutely fucking nothing with that. He hasn't even appeared in forever. God, it's been like ever since the Straw Hats split up, it's been really hard following shit. That was ages ago. Remember fucking when Sanji didn't appear at all for over a year? Uh, Elena could literally take a throw and then was still in range for a crush jab on a corner opponent if the opponent, like, uh, I think if Elena threw first. A fucking throw tech that pushes both characters apart and then Elena just crouch jabs you from there, from the range of a throw, throw tech. It's like, okay, Elena, thanks. Thanks for having the best crouch jab in the game. This is old, yes. I knew about Nemo from the arcade days of uh, SF4. I don't remember when exactly, but he was definitely really big around AE because he was generally considered to be the best Yang player in the world. And then he was also really big in Ultra because he was generally considered to be the best uh, Berlanta player in the world. Those are like the times I can really think of Nemo being well known. Actually, um, um, Sabo, Sabo is, Sabo is a character that's been, like, occasionally referenced to exist since, like, the beginning. Not since the beginning, but, like, Sabo wasn't just, like, thrown in. There are scenes that hint to Sabo's existence before he ever actually appeared. Oda's really good with that shit. Internal consistency, deciding something long before it happens and indicating it very slightly before it ever happens.
I have to get in bed before I keel over and die. I don't have to wake up for anything tomorrow, thank God. Yeah, it's time to go. Been fun, monsters.